Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Airships Conquer the Skies with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to a quick question before we get on with today's video. Because this season is rapidly coming to a close, and that's the piranha in the background. Oh my god, I've only just noticed the background silhouettes are all of your own craft. Well, that's fascinating, but I do have another question, <laughs> excluding me getting very, very distracted just then. So, in the next season, since this season is rapidly ending, I have a question. What difficulty should we play as? Should it be hard, very hard, or imperial? This season has been medium, and honestly, after we learnt the basic mechanics, we stopped building very silly craft, well, less inefficient craft, well, we stopped building buildings anyway. We have pretty much dominated the map. It's been just me slowly attacking everyone else, taking over territory, and mostly testing out different designs. So, which difficulty would you like to see? And reasons! But also, the map size. Uh, the map size we've been playing as today, or at least this season, was certainly not the large map size. So if you'd like to see that, also tell me. And that's pretty much that. The rest, I am going to be keeping as it is, starting tech, research and all that. But I would just like to ask today, so I have a good feel of what people want. I may do a poll, I may just read comments, I don't know. I don't particularly like polls all that much, honestly. So then, let's get building. So today, what I would really like to build is a mobile fortress. Essentially, something to go with the fire leg to attack cities. A siege tower, perhaps. I want it to look as much like a building as possible. It's going to be very one-sided, so almost all of the weaponry is on one side, because it's only focusing on buildings and pretty much nothing else. And I want it to be a bit silly. I want it to be a bit extreme when it comes to its firepower. So the options we have are, of course, the aerial torpedoes, because this would be... Highly explosive, but also absolutely devastating to anything ever. We then have the regular cannons. They're not the strongest, but if we can build a proper fortress, well, we can use a lot of them. And hopefully we can even use the targeting computer to make them a bit more accurate. We have the deck guns, which do have to be built a little bit weirdly. Now, if we go with this option... What I will most likely do is build a smaller long-range craft and then have multiple of them. With the rest, I'm thinking just one huge craft to go with one spider. The next option we have, however, is something I've not used yet, which is this, the heavy cannon. As you can see, it's pretty darn nasty. 120 piercing damage. Even the higher-end armors will really struggle. Then we have the imperial cannon, which is just utterly insane. This thing is incredibly heavy, it's got a lot of HP thankfully, and it does 400 piercing damage every 8 seconds, meaning that it does do a lot more DPS, but it is also a lot larger. I am very tempted by this, because just imagine this thing hitting the target, it's going to be glorious. So maybe a mix of the two, ooh yeah, maybe the Imperial Cannon and then the heavy cannons around it. That would be a little bit more balanced. And finally, we do have the heavy, tu the heavy turret. Now, the problem with this weapon is its firing arc. It needs to go on the top of the craft. Well, it doesn't necessarily need to go on the top of the craft. It could be placed something like this. But even then, the enemy has to be on level with these legs, which can be a little bit high. So that can sometimes just outright not work. But it does do 120 damage every 4 seconds, and it looks really cool. But we would have to build the craft very specifically for this weapon, and I don't see myself doing that. But I do really want to use the heavy turret, so I think I will be build a tank soon, and that tank will use that. Now, ignoring the stammer, I'm thinking we go with the Imperial Cannon and the Heavy Cannons. We could go with one of these. We could. We could just do this. We'll go with that at the front, and then build the rest up here, but I think that would look odd even by my standards. So let's quickly just place a few things down and see what we can make. We could make this sort of look like a virus, which would be very curious to say the least. Yeah, that's just never going to hit our intended target, so that's just not worth being there at all. We could add flak to the top and make this a bit more general purpose, but that would make it very expensive as well. We could have multiple of these. Yeah, at this point, though, it's not going to look like a building. It's going to look like a weird spider creature. Again. 
Hmm. I mean, obviously it's going to look spider-like anyway, but the idea is to put a building on top of these legs. How about we have it so that the sides kind of go over the edge, so it looks like it's been attached a little bit more? I feel like this is going to be really, really silly. Something like that. Then we have standard crenellations on top and stuff like that. Hmm. Now that is a lot of firepower. Is that too much ammo? And that's going to hurt things when it detonates. But to be fair, we do have this. The heavy steel armor. And I still need to say, to be fair, less. To be fair. What about bombs? As in, bombers. Attach all that to the back. That is really, really weird, and I don't know how I feel about that. Ignore half of this craft. Ooh, Imperial shot, and wow. Yep, the Imperial Cannon just did that. Just straight up, straight through the armor, completely detonating a cannon and just breaking into the whole area. The first shot missed, though. In fact, lots of shots are missing. Oh, yeah, we haven't got the telescope, or the crow's nest, or the computer, or people who can actually aim their weapons, or competent people in the whole ship. Land ship, that is. Yeah, these are just so easy to kill. I wanted to see if using them in very, very, very high numbers would be good, and apparently, no. Okay. Imperial Cannon, you're awesome. Rest, you seem okay. You're not particularly interesting visually, but when you hit, you can feel it. Yeah, it breaks through a piece of armor each time, which is pretty good considering the level of armor on these things, but look at that! It's like, oh look, there was a piece of armor with something inside, and now there's nothing! Like, seriously? Yeah, okay, you know what? No, no, we are changing this. We are changing it because that is far too cool. Uh, where are you? Minotaur. Why is that the default? Minotaur, Minotaur, Fluffy. Okay, remove all of those. And all of those, and all of those. I think you know where I'm going right now. I think everyone watching can kind of guess what I'm going to do. Weapons. Where's the happy weapon? Happy weapon. There. Happy weapon goes there as a- Ahem. Corridors. You're in the way of the happiness. Happy weapon. Underneath happy weapon. There we go with a row of happy. Yeah, I'm gonna keep you like this. Now, I would just build higher up because at this point I think this is just going to be a silly design because it is me at the end of the day. But the problem is... The Arc of Fire. If we get closer to the enemy to be a bit more accurate... Some of these top weapons are going to struggle to really hit down here, so we could perhaps build backwards a little bit now. Just a couple like that. Then have some struts attaching it to the main body. Oh my god, we're already 9,000 in cost. Oh my god, slightly reduced structural integrity due to large size. Uh, never mind. This is good. That's fine. That's good. Yes. Five. So with the heavy cannon, yes, I'm now back to the heavy cannon. Yeah, it's pretty much the same arc. That's annoying. Well, actually, I think the arc might be a little bit worse. 40 versus 45, yeah. The problem is, with the design I want at the moment, it's going to look just like a block. And that's going to annoy me every time I use this craft. Also, spamming one weapon. Now, admittedly, I've not been the most adventurous with weapon types, but, you know, we have a flamer, we have a missile craft, we have a missile and rifle and, um, ventral cannon turret craft. There's lots of stuff we could do. Ooh, yeah, the spendium cannons. We've just unlocked those, haven't we? Well, then. You've got, like, no firing arc, but let's see how good you are. Buy everything. Let's put a couple of these down. How expensive are the Whoa. These are almost half of the Imperial Cannon. 
But they're like half the size. In fact, are they even half the size? Yes. Okay, they're more than that. Okay, then. Let's just remove all this. Let's see what this is like. Kind of looks like a beetle. Somehow these two are just having a chat. I don't know how I managed to flip that, but I did. And I'll add land ship and add this fellow. Now, these are very, very long-range weapons. But we don't really have the accuracy for it. But let's just see when one hits. Uh, knocked out the armor straight away, which is pretty good. The shot itself looks really nice. It's hard to see. It's basically a crystal. It's basically firing the suspendium stuff, which is everywhere in this game. Very accurate at medium... Well, actually, long range, yeah. Not too destructive, though. The cannon seems to do the job a bit better. Well, there goes the cannons. Um, yeah, it's a good weapon. It's definitely a good weapon. But I think it needs to be on a more specific craft. Today is just me testing out things, isn't it? Yeah. Here's a weird idea. Flak that low. The reason is, I really don't like Flak's firing arc, and placing it as low as possible is generally a good thing. That would protect us from any bombers. So here's something interesting. The Suspendium Cannon, I've just been reading some of the stats, and it all seems fine, you know, 75 piercing damage, 4 second reload, blah blah blah. 11,000 meters for its maximum accurate range. Compared with a musket, which is 450, let's say. Also, it requires coal every 10 seconds. Now, I imagine it also requires ammo, but that's just... Really, really weird, and really, really cool at the same time. Lathrex, if your main target is on the ground, wouldn't it make complete sense that the weapons with the best arc go up and the worst arc go down, thus maximising the chance of hitting the target with all weapons? Well, yes, that is completely true, but I really, really want these Imperial cannons to hit. I do want the heavy cannons to hit, but nowhere near as much as these. Here's a problem, I still don't know how the structural integrity system works. Increases ship HP by a thousand. In what way? Is it shared with all modules? Is it shared with every single block? I don't know how that works. But I am really tempted to use a few of these. We are nowhere near our maximum weight and this thing doesn't need to be quick. So we could quite easily add some of these keels here just to use up the space. And if that increases the HP of everything, well, that would be fantastic as well. This is going to be so far away, it's unlikely to be hit too much by the enemies we're facing. And it has the best armor in the game currently applied. Well, non-exotic armor, so not the dragon scale or whatever it's called. But... I don't know how this works. It doesn't change the HP over here, so I can only assume it does change it, just... Not in a majorly noticeable way. Well... Maybe in a noticeable way, but not in a way you can actually look at. Oh, hit points. Oh, okay, well that will make life easier. Does this actually- Yes, it does, look at that! So 640 is now 7th- Wow, they even affect each other, that's weird. Oh my god, we can make this so, so sturdy. Kind of want to move the ammo now, because that's just making everything endangered, but still. I should have clicked this before. So the Grand Keel is the most efficient when it comes to weight into HP. That's interesting. The problem is, they're absolutely huge. So building with them is going to be an absolute nightmare, but it is one weight into one HP, and just doing this, well, as you can see, everything now looks way, way harder to kill. The targeting computer is huge. Okay, so let's just save this for now. Oh, wait, no. First of all, we need some more supply hatches. Supply. Sure, there we are. And let's see how accurate this thing is. 
I'm actually really happy with how it looks right now, so let's go and give it a test. It isn't exactly what I wanted originally, but it's became something else. So quite far away, but not stupidly far away. First shot wasn't aiming, second shot hit, third shot hit, fourth missed. A really nice hit there, and yet yeah, that section's gone. No one's complaining for ammo? No, okay, good. So, accuracy-wise, not a major issue. I'm not seeing that many misses. A couple, but not horrendous. Oh god, that's so much slower than- wow! So yeah, this thing's pretty stationary then, if we keep it like this. Seriously, that is getting stuck? How about you flip and then try to move backwards? I know it's silly, but will that work? Of course it will. Of course it will. Surprise! Okay, so let's see how much of a difference then the targeting computer gives us. So, I was testing out the computer, but then I decided to just stand here and see how long it takes them to kill us. Now, admittedly, a lot of the weapons are offline, but yeah, this thing just... It takes a beating, let's say that much. It may not be agile, but you don't want it targeting you. Okay, let's do that again, now purely testing out the computer. You go there. Buildings were around about here, weren't they, when I was doing the first test? Something similar to that anyway, it doesn't matter too much. That first shot wasn't with accurate fire, now it is, although it did hit anyway. The second shot with accurate fire missed. Double miss with the main cannons, then a very nice hit. Now, the main cannons don't have the accuracy of the heavy cannons. At least the range, I believe. I'll check that in a second. You can sort of tell that. Yeah, I feel like this thing needs to be a bit closer. Oh, it can only just about walk. But its health pool is just ludicrous, so it's definitely worth it. Yep, I don't think the computer's worth it. It's definitely different. You can definitely tell it's more accurate. But, well, I say that definitely. I'm not 100% sure if it is. Yeah, I think it is. I do believe it is, but it could be variance. I just don't think it's worth it personally after doing that test. I'm sure some people will disagree. And maybe in, in the long run, if I tested it more, I would change my mind. It's just so expensive. It requires coal, so it has to be down here, which is annoying. And then it costs nearly a thousand. Just for that. That's a whole, well, almost a whole Imperial cannon. Yeah, I don't like it. I just don't. Okay. 200 weight for an extra 800 health. Problem is, we can't flip this, so it's going to look really, really bad. But that's a lot of bonus health. For not all that much in terms of weight. Remember, this is one for one. This is, well, one for four. How many more of these give that bonus? Not all that much. The figureheads do, it seems. Problem is, they need to go on the front as well, so that's useless for us. Dome? No, that's just HP. Uh, the pipes are all HP. Again, the figurehead does. Shame you can't flip this. Oh, we could sacrifice a cannon for one of these. So if we remove the cannon, this should straight up 
give everything more HP anyway. Yep, because it's being shared less. And we add this. That's a lot more HP. But one less cannon, which is totally not worth it. The ship is heavy and may have difficulty navigating terrain. Yes, I'm aware of that, but I didn't realise the extent. <laughs> I didn't realise this would get stuck on everything. I was assuming you'd just be slow when it said that, but apparently not. Is that being too greedy? That's probably being too greedy, yeah. So what now then? What else do we need to do with this? We now have repair bays, and that's pretty much everything I want. It's a long-range support craft that's going to do a lot of damage to ground forces, and that's pretty much it. It's a siege beast, and it's called the Bombard, and this will partner up with the Spider. So, let's go into the regular mode and give it at least one test. Instantly building the Bombard. In fact, we're building two, and I forgot to paint this thing, so one second, let's first of all... Open design, Bombard, paint, okay, so as usual, this all along the top, then red, then this. Good enough for now. Just all the basics. Once they're done, we're going to invade over here. I think if we go over here, we can just go over to their land. Could bring some piranhas along with us for some anti-aircraft support. So no, you can't move over there. Maybe we'll have to create all the ground forces on the island. I was hoping these would be sort of a... I don't really know. Maybe we just need to control this. That shouldn't be too difficult to kill. Uh, fellas. You go over there, and let's try to invade this. And see, once we control that, can we move from port to port? Is this a shipping line or not? Hello, enemy territory. Okay, so we want you guys to be a bit lower than you are currently. To avoid some of their flak. Also, don't really want you to stack up like I'm stacking the bombers, so go like that. Okay, all of you on accurate fire. You two, which is the biggest threat. Obviously, these guys, the problem is, of course, they do indeed have flak. So, I don't really know what you're going to do here. Just get lower down. Bombard that. Almost point blank. Just go over there to make sure when you die you hurt them, please. Excellent. Thanks, Piranha. Sorry, Tree. Okay, so I got bored. Brutal takeover. You are moving over there, so let's intervene. Oh, looks like they're still going to try and fight us. Well, that's scary. Okay, we do now control that, and yes, okay. So we can use these as shipping yards, uh, shipping lines, whatever you want to call them. It just has to be after you control where you're going. So you can never invade with ground forces. I mean, that makes sense. I just don't like it very much. Build a bombard there. The thing is, with the spiders, as much as I love them, they won't play nice with each other. Because there's no way you can get the flame in range if there's one already in front of you, and once that one in front of you dies, its corpse will most likely be in the way. So, the bombards are the only way we can really stack ground forces. Then in the air, we already have the piranha and the carrier and stuff like that, which is very good anti-aircraft. I can see why you would fight this. Hopefully we still win. Your rifles are so annoying. Remember though, these piranhas only cost 666 resource. They are very, very cheap for what they are. 
Hmm, actually, that's one of the old versions with the chamber, which is next to the explosive um, thing there. Okay, you swap over because he's clearly firing at you. Come on, knock out those balloons. Or do that. That works too. Knocking out the bombs, probably more effective. Bye-bye. And you can't turn, so all I need to do is get right up next to you and say goodbye. Anything else left? No, I think we're okay. The day is ours! Lovely. Bombards have been made. You're probably going to take back that, or at least try to. Uh, need more piranhas over here for support. That'll do nicely. I might just let them take that, because one piranha will probably lose. So I'll just wait. Researching everything, for we are the Empire of Science. Um... What else is left? I don't think there is anything left. It's all just the ore stuff. We're not even using torpedoes. Well, we are a little bit, but hardly any. So I guess that's the last thing then. Bonus damage, I suppose. You can destroy all the defenses. Have fun. That's a bit faster than I expected. Hello. I think we're going to win this. You're attacking pirates, that's fine. First bombard is done. Elder Dragon versus Lathrixian Legion. Whoa. You know what? I want to see it in action. Retributions? Good luck. You're all dead. Yeah, fire at the little guy, you might actually... Whoa, long range flamethrower. I want that! <laughs> was just... Wow, this thing has a long range when it comes to fighting. Either way, though, yeah, you need to get over there. It's still so fa Even the bombard is so quick at moving. So, for research, I have nothing I really want anymore. We're pretty much done. So, basic research. We're just sort of stacking money at this point. I would say we have essentially won. Okay, Bombard, just get there. I just want to see you both together. Piranhas can just stay where they are. You two move together. Wee! <laughs> How are you faster? Oh, it's so silly. The legs are so broken. In my opinion, the spider legs seem a bit overpowered, I've got to be honest. I don't mind how much weight they can carry. I just think they shouldn't be both the best at carrying weight and the fastest... Especially since they're not massively expensive. You're a bit close there. There we go. I mean, that's how explosions should look. Let's just go all the way there. Did that just really happen? They instantly took that back. We're not taking it back, but they caused a rebellion. Okay, good. This fight might be a bit more interesting. Sadly, though, we are in a fog bank, which means we're probably going to miss most shots anyway. Yeah, long range plus fog. We're not hitting. But saying that, neither are they. But as soon as they saw that flamer, then they gave up. Wow, what? Wow, they changed their colours. They joined into an alliance. That's cool. 
You invite that, you invite that. Just two of you again, at least this time it's a nice sunny day. You know what, you can just stay there, that's fine. Spider, get walking, bombard, you just stay there. Maybe we do need the computer. There's a lot of misses then. Oh, but then a direct hit from an Imperial Cannon. And another direct hit, lovely. And they surrender. Yeah, the bombards are fine. Hello there, weird alliance. We're here to pretty much tank you out. It's like a really, really explosive conga line. And gentle takeover. I'm assuming you'll surrender fairly quickly, but not instantly. You move up. You know the drill by now. Oh, instantly just hollowing that thing out before the first torpedo even hit. Yeah, the bombards are fine. They're not as accurate as I would like, but considering the cost of those computers and the fact we can have several of these at this point, I think they're fine. Ooh. Yeah, I would surrender too, buddy. I would surrender too. Let's finish off taking over this island. Would you like to just surrender? Good choice. Achievement unlocked broadside. I don't know what that is, but thank you. Oh, come on, I want a proper fight. Where are you going? I'm going to here, so you defend that. I'll just... Yep, I will let you kill the defences. Some damage with the flak, but yeah, nowhere near enough. Flak just can't cut through armour, and since the enemy bombers are using armour, well... You can imagine how ineffective that is. Against things like the piranhas here, it would be way more effective. Also, are you all the old version of the piranha? Yes, you are. Let's see. Send spy. You city. Oh, what's that? <gasps> they have little aircraft. That's adorable. That is adorable. Once again, you move forwards, you just stay where you are and fire. Oh, look at that, that was better. I just feel mean at this point, we're just sort of crushing them. I have done this exact same move now so many times. On the upside, we are causing them to surrender before the spider even gets there, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Bombard, let's meet up with the others. Okay, you can go away in the corner there. All just stay still. Instant surrender. Yep. We've got to that point. You're going there, okay, that's fine. Piranhas, defend there then. Oh look, it's on the little... Hangers, that's neat. I don't really have any weapons to fight them. Doesn't matter when they surrender though. That's a shame, we have to land here so I can't fight that anyway. Come on, give me a strong city. Thank you, okay. That's a strong city. And we can actually go straight there. Ooh, can we? If we go here... We can do that. Okay, lovely. You're moving into there. You'll take it, then I'll just take it right back. 
as usual, we'll just sacrifice our, our ground building. Our ground building, as opposed to our flying buildings. I mean, to be fair, our carrier is pretty big. Oh, just look at that. Oh, we could do carriers and the rest, but right now I'm still trying to test out the bombards. Will they surrender? Yes, they will. You invade there. Um, might not surrender straight away. Nope, we have just got overwhelming force at this point. I think this may be the end of the season. I was going to maybe pull it out for one more, but no. Stretch it out for one more, rather. There we go. And so then, here we are. i um, going to send in one carrier as anti-air support. And this is their... No, they have two. They have two of these left. God, our carrier's big. Pause. Get moving. You just focus on that. Though I do want you to move backwards soon. I should have let you sport. Yep, we are being flacked and it's more my fault. Cannons have knocked out a lot of stuff already, and now the spider's here. I'm assuming the bomber landed on us. Oh, that flak though. Uh, Spidey boy, get back up. Thank you. Yeah, you just stay far back. You guys keep firing. It's a lot easier to see where the missiles are going than the regular shots. Okay, get closer. Maybe we do need the targeting computer after all. Victory nonetheless. And I'll wait until we can fully repair that. The Bombards now have the targeting computer, which means they should be able to hit targets a lot better. They should assume so. Though it is night time, so we're less accurate right now. Was it night time in that last fight? That would make sense. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Just using the bombards now. The sun is in our eyes. Well, that was a direct hit. Lovely. Or perhaps it was them firing. I couldn't see in time. Hello, Oddbury. We need to find someone who has to fight. Where are you going? You're going to there, so carrier, please defend that. Oh, look at that! That's a different type of bomber. It's tiny! Well, that happened. You invite that.
And then you attack the brigands. Because they have to fight back. Ooh, and they're quite big. Sadly, though, it is night time. I was going to try and ram us, but it's got all that in the way. Um, ooh, that's an aircraft. If you can fire at that, please do. It can't seem to move, though, so... Eh. Oh, it's a border. You've probably not got enough people to take out one of these bombards. They have so much crew. Oh, well, you took out that without me even seeing. Yep, you seem more accurate at night than we saw in day, so we do need the targeting computer. Once again, borders. One cannon can hit you. Good enough. Sorry about that, fellas. Uh, not even going to try versus the dragon. Once again, they merged. Down we go. This might not actually go in our favour, got to be honest. Oh, one flat gun. Feel a bit safer doing this. Eh, we lost the balloons, not much else. Goodbye. Carrier, get back and get repaired. Bombards, get over there to make your move in a little while. Where are the rest of the carriers? We had loads. Carriers, just go invade. I'm, I'm obviously not really paying that much attention right now. I just kind of want to get this over with. Look how much money we have spare. You may have flak, but we have lots and lots of planes. And victory! So that was that. So the bombard then. Hmm. Bit of an odd one. Medium range, aim fire. I feel like I've not been using this correctly. I feel like what I should have been doing is more medium range, especially since we've been focusing on the Imperial cannons. Because that was fine. I definitely prefer rockets though. Rockets just seem so much more effective. Or the aerial torpedoes, but yeah, that seemed fine. I feel like I was using them far too long range, and the computer definitely helps more than I originally gave it credit for. So, Bombard, better than I've shown it to be. Either way though, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's episode, and it is indeed the end of the season. As soon as I started the campaign after building the Bombard today, I think I instantly realised I may as well end it now. If I continue, I'm just sort of forcing it, and that's no fun. So in the next playthrough, going to have a much higher difficulty, depending on what people say, and hopefully, we're going to die a lot, because that's just more fun. I want a serious challenge. I don't think I've been challenged now for the last few episodes, and so my building has got even more sloppy than usual. I don't think the builds have been 100% fantastic, and I want to improve at the game. And the best way to improve is to get your butt kicked. So, thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Airships Conquer the Skies is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.